All right, we're back. I was away on a trip, <clears throat> and now uh, just tonight I was took my wife out to supper. Our birthdays are both coming up end of this week, and tonight was a good night to celebrate. But now we're back, and uh, we're going to look at this piece 1128. And um, I looked at the first couple pages. That looks pretty easy, two and three. If you find that challenging, let me know. But I think by following the examples and... Um, you're just factoring into two parentheses and then solve each parenthesis, set them equal to zero, and solve to find the two values for x. Sometimes, like in the first two problems, you can just factor, or in the first problem, you can just factor x out, and then you're left with the parentheses. <clears throat> but you should uh, come up with two values for x. All right, now let's look at page four, fractional equations and quadratics. And um, I was looking at the two examples that they have. Um, and in both cases, they have, you know, a fraction equals a fraction. So then you could subtract the one, you know, set it equal to zero. But um, I'm going to show you a, um, because, and then none of the problems look just like that. Okay, they all have a number or a fraction, a third term that they throw into the problem. So um, let's let's set you up with, <clears throat> this is one of the ones from your homework, and we'll just take your ways into it, get you going, and then and talk about the steps we're going through, and then you can finish it once we get to a certain point, all right? So we're looking to see what is the common denominator, and there should be an equals in here somewhere, and yep, I missed it. It's right there, all right, so that's the equals. Um, <clears throat> So what we're going to do is get the common denominator, which is actually going to be these three terms, and we're going to multiply everything through by that and see what cancels, see what we need to distribute. Now the way I like to do this, this is not the way they picture it in the book, but you'll get the idea, it just simplifies it, is I put the common denominator out front put it over one, and then I imagine distributing this times all three of these terms. When I do this times this, imagine the x minus three is canceling, so we have seven parentheses x minus four. I'll go ahead and write it that way, all right? Equals, multiplying this, oops, I forgot the two, all right? So two times seven actually makes this 14. Now we're going to take all three of these times this term, the x minus 4 cancels. So out front, I'll have 2 x minus 3 times x minus 2. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Hang on. All right. Oh well, here we go. And then I'm going to do this times this term, just the 2 cancels. So we end up with the two parentheses, x minus 3 times x minus 4. Now, you see what happened? We got, all, got rid of all the denominators, which is very helpful. Now I'm going to distribute this and get 14x minus 64. This is going to give me x squared and then minus 5x plus 6. But we'll distribute the 2 times all of those, so 2x squared minus 10x plus 12. Okay, are you with me? And then over here is the x squared. And then the outer is negative 4x. The inner is negative 3x, which is negative 7x. And then negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. Let me just make sure I did that right. Positive 6, 6, 2. Yeah, okay. Now, at some point we needed to, and now's a good point, good time to do that. We need to bring everything to the same side and set it equal to zero. It doesn't matter if you bring it to the left or bring everything to the right. So I'm going to bring these two things over here. Say minus 14x and plus 64. Okay, and that gives me zero over here. Now we can go through and find all the like terms. So three x squared, we have negative 10x, negative 7x, negative 14x. Okay, so what does that give us? Negative 31. Am I doing something wrong there? 
10, 7, 14, and then the last would be all the constants. So we have 12 and 64, so 76. Okay. Then here's where the fun comes in. We have to first see if there's a common factor we can take out, but this is a prime number, so we can't factor anything out. So we have to do 3x and x. And then here's where you can start playing with some numbers and try to come up with the two numbers that multiplied together will give you 76. And then playing around with these numbers and the three and these, come up with the negative 31 in the middle. And then we're going to take each of these, since this equals zero, and set each of these terms here equal to zero and solve to find x. And I just want to make sure I'm not leading you astray. So, page four. Oh, you know what? A lot of these do have in the answer key. Nice. They have the uh, solution, solution guides. Well, that's the test key. Sorry. I'm looking at the test key. Uh, <laughs> All right. Page five. And it looks like I forgot something here because they have <clears throat> 3x squared minus 31x plus 81. So what did I miss here? Oh, I see it right here. This 12. That's still not going to give me. Still not going to give me 80. What did I miss? Oh, I did. Did I do this wrong? 14. I think I, uh, 14 times 4, ah, that's 56, that's 64, woo, okay, wow, you caught me, good, I just seen if you were paying attention, how many of you caught that before, you didn't say anything, shame on you, all right, so, when we bring that over here, then it's 56, ah, and then that's going to make that 80, okay, but uh, I'm going to let you finish that then, now that I know that we're on, we're on the right track to that point. And so we're going to end up with a whole number here, and then when you solve this, you're going to get a fraction. All right. Glad we caught that. See, even teachers make mistakes once in a while. That was a simple multiplication fact. Must have been all that dessert sitting heavy on my stomach. All right. You go ahead and work on that, and we'll see you back on the next lesson.